Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about, uh, you know, something I came across. I was looking at uh, the page of, of one of the researchers out there, uh, you know, who's into bodybuilding, puts out stuff, and he links a lot of stuff over on uh, his Facebook page. And I came across a series of studies he had, you know, discussing if the mind-muscle connection is, is even real or not, if this is actually a thing that improves muscle activation. Uh, and what I thought was, was fascinating, because I previously said we, we, had, we had one study previously on uh, internal cueing that did show that on, say, the bench press, that you could slightly bias the pecs or triceps with mind-muscle activation. All right, by focusing on that, that it caused something like a 2% higher increase in EMG in, in the muscle that you were focusing on more on a multi-joint exercise. Okay. Now, obviously, a single joint exercise, like a, like a curl or an extension or whatever, that would be kind of impossible because one muscle tends to be the primary mover that's doing most of the work. So you can't, you can't really bias it in that regard. So in theory, this would only work on, on multi-joint exercises. Um, and now keep in mind, EMG is not the be-all, end-all. It just shows how much nervous system activity is, is, is reaching those particular muscles. Okay, it's no guarantee of, of actually contracting better. So always keep that in mind. But it did show a small bias. But, you know, by that same token, here's our problem with that. We know that anything that puts stuff in a contracted position shows more bias on EMGs. Even when, that, when muscle growth is studied and it produces less. I mean, a perfect example. Um, there have been studies showing uh, like the, the glute bridge or hip thrust producing dramatically more glute activation than a squat, right? But then when we study muscle growth in trained lifters, the squat tends to oftentimes cause, in many cases, not every case, slightly more glute growth, like a full deeper, full range of motion squat, even though the EMG activity is, is significantly lower. So EMGs aren't, aren't the be-all, end-all for what's happening in the muscle, but it tells us what's happening, say, with the nervous system. And that's why sometimes we feel contracted positions more, right? I guess due to the, the neurological response, but they don't always cause more muscle growth. In fact, contracted positions tend to cause less, right? Any exercise where you're really able to contract at the top, right? tends to cause less muscle growth that wants it bias the load towards the stretch position. And this is this has been confirmed in numerous studies that measure muscle growth plotted over weeks or months. So, you know, we had that, but the problem even with that study was that when we focused on external cueing, just exploding the weight as hard as possible, everything lit up more. Instead of biasing, everything went up. Right? Pecs and triceps both showed more uh, electromagnetic activity from the, the nervous system. All right. The issue we're having, though, is that some of the studies then that looked at this on, on things like rows, uh, some of what he linked, and again, there's uh, so many studies out there at this point on it. Um, they're accumulating. that were showing no change in activation. In other words, trying to focus on it didn't work and the problem is in some cases it reduced the number of reps you could do right well that's a problem because if we lose reps while using the same weight in the same range of motion we get less tension in, in all the different muscle fibers okay and we need to be clear there that performance matters and I don't mean gaining reps because we cheated Right, or gaining reps because we bounced a deadlift off the floor, or bounced the bench off of our chest. That's that's not muscle activation. But when you're doing something like a row, right, that can be controlled or a machine lift for a full range of motion, you always know more reps with the same weight is, is more tension, right? In in any exercise where you remove the ability to cheat, any exercise where we keep the form the exact same. If you can do 10 reps or 11 reps with the same weight versus eight, you're going to get more muscle activation. You're going to get more hypertrophic potential. It's not guaranteed you're going to get more muscle growth, but the potential for more is there. 
okay, because performance matters. And people have to keep that in mind, right? It is all about tension and workload on the muscle. I'm not saying external workload always, because again, there are ways to cheat, but if you're not cheating or you're not cheating any differently, yeah, the number of reps you can get with a given weight is pretty important for, for muscle growth. Like this has been studied a lot. We know this. This is this that's not a point of controversy. Okay, in other words, subjecting a muscle to more work. The more work you suggest subject a muscle to, the greater the stimulus. Not a difficult concept to grasp. But I, I think most of us can get our heads around that. Right? Muscle works harder, it's, it's, it's trained more effectively. Now, unless it's, it's trained to the point that it can't recover, right? It's a different topic. So here's the problem with this. In this case, this, this perceived mind-muscle connection in some of these, they lost reps without showing additional electromagnetic activity. Now, I don't know what the causation for that. When I say something like that, people will ask things sometimes in comments. Well, why? Why did that happen? I don't know. There's your answer. I actually don't know. But I can tell you it's not good. So, you know, how do we need to look at these things? Uh, I think the whole point here is that really the mind-muscle connection itself probably isn't that important. Okay, let's come over and say that again. Not that important. What is probably important is the form you use. Okay, the form you use. Because that's the other thing too. Sometimes when people are saying, well, if I do this, I feel the muscle more. But they're, they're moving in a way that obviously uses the muscle more. Well, that makes sense. Right? It, that does make sense. You're subjecting the muscle to more, more uh, tension. Well, okay, so how do about we focus on that? You know, if you want to you get big, start focusing on how much workload can I subject the muscle to on a set-for-set -set basis, All right? Let's put our focus in the stuff that matters, the form you use, the weight you use, the number of reps you get with it. And these are quantifiable. These are things that you can measure, that you can track, that you can control, and we know they work you know that's the thing at the end of the day uh you know we look at these different things there are things that we know work and if we know it works uh, it's probably a good idea to stick to it instead of too much focus on on you know more esoteric things right a little bit too much focus there all right guys but that's really all i have to say on that today i hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.